was well, asked twice this week, and there was also an interesting story that came out about how realtors get paid. So if you're ever wondering, we're gonna talk about that coming up next. Okay, what's going on friends? Dylan the here with the Bobby Gallon video blog. And this week we're gonna talk about how do realtors get paid? And this was kind of sparked by, I was asked actually twice kind of randomly from a client and somebody inquiring on how exactly we get paid. And so I'm going to explain that. And there was also an interesting story that came out this week about national statistics and who in the realtor community is collecting all of this money. Right. And so this is it, interesting that so the top 50 percent of realtors collect 91 percent of the commissions paid by everybody who sells a property throughout the year. Right. So that means the bottom 50 percent are splitting 9 percent of the overall commissions that are paid out every year to realtors across the country and the top 1% of realtors are getting 15% of the overall commissions that are paid throughout the year. So it's not an equitable distribution of money, right? On who gets paid in the real estate community from uh, sellers who are sell buyers and sellers who are selling a home. And I'll explain how that all works out. But the reality is most realtors don't get paid, right? There's a lot of them that are not getting paid or not getting paid very much. So when we look at kind of how we get paid, that's why most there's a national statistic that nine out of 10 uh, realtors leave the industry after two years because it's very hard to make it for a lot of different reasons. But you only get paid if you actually sell homes. Right. So there's no salary. There's no hourly wage. There are some situations, unique situations where you might have like a training program or be it some kind of flat well, a fee brokerage where they actually pay you hourly or a salary. But in most cases, the vast majority of realtors are independent contractors who only get paid if you close on properties. And so that also means that we are not employees of the brokerage that we work for, no matter what kind of brokerage it is. And so there is no guarantee that you're going to get paid. There is no benefits, right? We don't get health care. We don't get a 401k plan. We are purely independent contractors that uh, work as much as we want or as little as we want. And we can't be told by our brokers how much we have to work or what we have to do, because then you would get into an employment type situation. And so you're purely independent contractor. You only get paid on what you close, right? So it can be a very up and down business where you might get busy and have a good month and you might have a month where you don't make any money. So you have to be able to manage your money. And that's what makes it difficult also is that a lot of people like that security of having a paycheck that they can count on month after month. And you definitely will not have that in the real estate business, especially in the beginning before you establish a well-functioning, consistent business that consistently returns revenue. So the standard way we get paid is that a seller signs a listing contract agreeing to pay a commission for the sale of their home. In most cases, it's 6%. And that is split between the buyer and seller brokerages, right? So it's not all going to one realtor. When the buyer's realtor comes, they're going to split that 3%, 3%, 50%, 50% to each of the realtor's brokers that brought those parties together to do that transaction. And an important thing to understand here is that you have to get paid through your broker, right? You can't get paid directly. You have to have a broker's license that is overall collecting those commissions and then they then distribute them to the agents. So what's important to understand about that is when you calculate the 3%, right? This seems like a lot of money, but that's not all going directly to the agent necessarily. The agent has to then get split some of that with their broker because their broker is going to take a portion of that to do business and to do all the things that that brokerage does in order to conduct business in the market that they're in. So they're not necessarily getting the full commission that when you see that come out of your closing statement and how much you're getting paid, that's not necessarily all going to the realtor and a pretty good generalization of explaining the breakdown of money that I've heard before is that when you get that 3% commission, a lot of times the way you can look at it is 1% of it is going to go to your broker and doing business, right? The cost of being a member of the MLS and paying, uh, insurance, uh, fees, uh, there's all kinds of other fees. You gotta be members of the, the board 
the local state and national board. There's all of these fees that you got to do. And really it's like, I tell people it's ballpark like $3,000 a year just to be an active realtor, whether or not you sell anything just to pay all the fees that it takes to stay an active realtor. So 1% of that 3% can easily go to all of those costs. Another 1% is going to go towards taxes, right? We, we don't get a withholding. You get paid 100% of what you get paid and that's going to go towards local state and federal taxes. And so you got to set some of that money aside. And then the other 1% is really like take home pay that the realtor can feed their family with, right? So you kind of look at that and it doesn't look like as much money after you see kind of the breakdown and how that all works because your cost, if you're a uh, salaried employee to your employer is not just the money that you bring home. There's all kinds of additional costs that they pay to keep you employed, like your insurance, your benefits, your retirement, all of these different things that really add on another 30, 40% to what you get paid. And we don't have that, right? So we get paid everything and then we got to figure all that stuff out individually and distribute that, uh, those different costs across the different places that you got to, you got to pay them to. So that's kind of that one third, one third, one third rule. So a couple of reminders on things to just consider when you're entering into uh, the real estate world of buying or selling and kind of understanding how realtors are compensated because everybody thinks we're overpaid and get paid too much and are greedy. But at the end of the day, we work very hard for what we do. And if you hire a professional, they should be a professional. It should be an expert in the field that is going to help make the process, get you the maximum amount of money for your house, but also make the process as smooth and stress-free as possible because it's normally something that people don't do very often. And there's a lot of different things that go into it. I can make a separate video of the 60 different things that we do through a transaction that uh, if you try and do it yourself would be very difficult and you don't do it yourself, right? You don't file your taxes by yourself. In most cases, you don't do surgery on yourself. You don't go to court by yourself, but you always have a professional to help you through those things. So you don't want to be inconsiderate of the time and effort that a realtor is going to spend with you, right? So some quick tips on things not to do. If you're a buyer, right? Don't go have a realtor show you 25 houses and then walk into an open house and write the offer with whoever's sitting at open house because that person's going to get paid and the person that spent all that time with you showing you all around every neighborhood is not going to get any compensation. Um, if you're a seller, right? Don't list your house, have your realtor do 10 open houses and list it for three months and then you decide to cancel the listing contract and sell it to your friend, right? So to, to cut the realtor out. Everybody works hard. Everybody deserves to be compensated. And those are kind of the things that happen not often in the industry, but definitely Sometimes I just don't think people are, you know, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt and they may not understand how this all works and that's why they do it that way. But it's something really to consider when you are hiring somebody to help you through this process that they really aren't going to get paid until you actually close that property. And there are a lot of other things that realtors do, you know, that incur costs. Like a lot of times they may pay for the cleaning or pay for the termite fee or, you know, help out with some repairs if, if, um, the buyer and seller can't come together to hold that deal together. And so at the end of the day, there's, it seems like a lot of money, but when you break it down and you spread it out across all the different places, it's not always a ton of money. I can tell you, if you work hard and you're a professional, you can make a very good living in real estate, but there is no time clock. There is no supervision. It's very much a self-driven business. And that's why it's hard for a lot of people. There's very little security. You can have a very good month and a very bad month. And so it's very unique in that situation. And a lot of times we don't talk about it. So I figured let's be transparent. Let's talk about it. Put that information out there. Hopefully I can help you understand what you're asking of someone and their time and value the expertise and help that you're getting when you work with a professional and understand that they are being compensated well for their time and effort, but it's going to be on the back end. And if it doesn't close, it's, uh, there's no money for them. And if you're a buyer, don't feel like you're getting off scot-free, right? I always remind people that that money comes out of the seller's statement right at the end. But at the end of the day, it's a market, right? And the costs of selling a home are part of the market value. So a buyer is contributing to those costs, not directly per se, but definitely in the overall cost of a home, that 6% commission fee is going to be factored in, right? Because sell, a seller net is always going to be uh, exclude that 6%. So it's not totally free to a buyer. You don't get, you don't pay it directly, but it's definitely paid in the overall purchase price because that's what the seller is looking at is the purchase price minus the fees that they have to pay, which the biggest one is the commissions. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments or hit me up at Dylan at Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Blah.